Hello, uh, Giovanna and Daniel. Um, it's compelling to watch these three films in a sequence. We just watched uh, the two first films of the trilogy in the soft opening. And now the third and uh, last episode of this uh, series. Um, I, I would like to start with a question to Giovanna. Um, the trilogy raises some difficult questions. Uh, or, or, or subjects, so what it takes um, to make a home, when we live alone, and uh, where we grow older. This uh, what, when, and where, I think it was something that I uh, felt you are probably asking a question or you want to, to seek for, for uh, 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 engaging with subjects that are quite complex and difficult. Uh, but while you do so, you also uh, present in the film some really excellent and, and thoughtful architectural projects. Uh, it's inspiring to see projects that are uh, redesigning typologies, uh, rethinking uh, modes of operation, but while also critically engaging and researching uh, these uh, conditions that we live uh, with in the 21st century. Um, could you briefly summarize the trilogy, perhaps, this, how these subjects were, were something that you wanted to, to, to tackle? Thanks, Paolo. And um, yeah, I was thinking today if um, actually we could have had other, like we thought it always as a trilogy, but um, I was thinking maybe we should have been more open and then maybe there are other other issues that we wanted to tackle in the same series. But I think the, the, we really started to think about this and thinking what are the, you know, the main issues that cities are going through and not only the city as in sense intended as the urban fabric, but like the people living in the city and what are those populations that are more fragile or marginalized um, that somehow, um, often they don't even have a voice in how the city is, uh, is grown and they are the one who have the more uh, challenging uh, lives somehow. So, um, so we thought that uh, to really focus on, on those questions and, and think how architecture can contribute to this conversation. And I think the film really helped to also not have architecture isolated. So somehow the architects have a voice, but actually, the homeless are the ones who are telling what means to live in the streets. The elderly, as you've seen, they are expressing what, what they need in to uh, live and so on. So I think that the is was really conceived to really question what are the, the big issues that I think globally, and that's why also we went in so many different places that globally uh, we are facing and, and somehow uh, where architecture can can really um, yeah contribute to the conversation. So so the first was uh, about the uh, unhoused people and and somehow uh, it coincided with a moment when we were doing it where the numbers were going up and then there was also the COVID crisis and more people were were actually um, living in the streets and and we also saw what was the treatment of those people in that period. Uh, so that was the, the kind of urgency of, of talking about that population. And then we felt somehow the idea of loneliness is a kind of uh, fil rouge that somehow is in the three movie, even if it's not the main subject, but somehow the, the risk of of living in the streets and, and being alone and not having support. The second movie deal with the people who actually decide to, and it's an increasing demographic uh, population of like they, they, they are living alone or deciding to live alone. And then the third, uh, the elderly again, is this in increasing population and, and that's the kind of the aging population is, is growing exponentially. So those are the future demographics that we all need to deal with. Like, and, and, and so somehow the question for the CCA was like, we're talking about all kinds of different architecture, but maybe we really should focus on, this, on these questions.
perhaps uh, before I ask Daniel a question, I would like to continue with, with Giovanna, but just very quickly, how was it to watch the film on a big screen? I think it was the first time you were. Yeah, very exciting. Um, and I'm just gonna hijack just right. the microphone for one second and just say it was also very exciting to watch it with some of the core team that made the, all three movies. Um, I wanna shout out Karin, Hannah, and Jonas, last name Spriestersbach, that's how you say it, um, <laughs> who, yeah, we're just instrumental in making it. Um, so I just, I want to, and there are a lot of other people involved as well, so. Can wave again as well. <laughs> no, thanks. It's, I, I have almost uh, goosebumps to feel that you are all here to, for the, the, the opening. It's, it's, it's amazing. I'm really so excited to be able to, to gather you uh, here in Porto. Um, I, I have, uh, a question. So when I learned that the first film was invited to be part of the 58th session of the Commission for Social Development at the United Nations headquarters in New York in 2020, uh, which tell us everything we need to know about the relevance of these subjects and uh, uh, beyond uh, building design itself. But Giovanna, can, can a film influence such an important agenda at that, at that level. How do you feel about that? We, we were so excited when the the call has, and they say they wanted to screen the movie in the you know in the building in New York at the United Nations. And I think, beside excitement of of being there, I think the relevant question was that the United Nations were trying to put out a resolution of the, how they understand the question of um, homelessness or people who don't have a home and so on. And it's not easy because obviously the United Nations tried to kind of go across and to put a resolution all the countries need to agree. So even the notion of not having a home or the notion of precarity or the notion of living on the land but in a way that is not having what we intend as a traditional house um, is so different culture to culture. So um, the, what they wanted to do was to see as much as possible documentaries and film on the subject to inform their way of seeing um, this, this issue. So um, yeah, I was, uh, we were um, really happy that, that somehow the movie went beyond the kind of architectural public or like the kind of even large society that we imagine the film could have been directed and go um, to, um, yeah, to a kind of decision makers. And, and somehow I think this is also the reason why we're using the movie as a tool in order that maybe this can go to the municipal level or the federal level uh, of, a, of our country or another country and, and maybe make a change in the way, you know, um, decisions are made or, or plans are made somehow, yeah. Um, this, uh, each film at, at their own scale, I think, relates the subject or the buildings or the design of the subject with the city itself and the surroundings and the context. And I'm interested in this idea of the, the balance between how much of the film looks at uh, the architects or the architectural debates, uh, but also how much of it, it deals with the, the, the people who live those experiences, those loneliness, those uh, homelessness and um, uh, aging. And how, how did you balance while directing the film between, you know, the, the architectural discourse and these communities that gather around the subjects. Yeah, um, well, it was a, a really productive collaboration with Giovanna, the, the CCA team. We had so many discussions about why are we making a movie about these three topics, about any, any topics in general, and the CCA has such an incredible history of presenting information, telling stories through exhibitions, through books, um, through uh, research programs, and the question was, what, what can a film do that is different? Uh, what, what does it provide the CCA in terms of as a communication tool? And I think a film obviously can provide a lot of facts, 
there's information, there's exposition, you can learn about certain places and topics and ideas, but it's also great for transmitting feelings and emotion. And I think um, what we were always trying to calibrate very thoughtfully, very sensitively, is um, can, can these movies make people feel things? Uh, because the truth is, is if you're interested in issues around homelessness, if you're interested in why people are living alone, these dem big demographic shifts, and of course all the, the incredible diverse ways in which people age and how we can think about better ways for, for people to des design spaces for aging. I mean, there's great books. There's, <laughs> there's, there's great uh, exhibitions to, to go to. Um, and, and these movies hopefully provoke people to, to go there, but also they hope, I hope they provoke people to feel things, and that's the start of a lot of productive conversations. Well, thanks, uh, Daniel. But I, just before I open up the floor for questions from, from the audience, um, perhaps Giovanna would, uh, uh, could tell us a little bit about how the CCA operates. I mean, in Portugal, the CCA is mostly known for holding and uh, hosting Alvaro Cesar's archive and uh, uh, the archives of many important architects. Um, but it's, in, it's an incredible archive, by the way. I, I was very lucky and fortunate to be there once. And, um, but you are also very interested in, uh, in bringing architectural knowledge to the general public and engaging the public uh, with the subjects of architecture and also addressing pressing issues like you've been saying and that uh, we face in our uh, societies, in, in our contemporary societies. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the CCA's mission and about as well how do you plan to address this uh, mission these days uh, throughout the festival? Yeah, I understand that the perception of the CCA can be that it's like um, a lot of different things and uh, together. But in a way, I see this all as like one, one thing. Uh, so our mission is making architecture a public concern. So it means that um, we would like everyone to understand the importance of architecture, the impact that architecture can have and how it can really shape the built environment and define your, your life somehow. And so um, I think the choice of the archives that we have are also related to that. It's always architects who had an impact on the, you know, on the way people live and think. Uh, there are always architects with a lot of ideas and ideas that can be, that are not in the past, that can be looked at to actually understand better what to do in the future. So um, I would say that the connection is really, um, in connection to the mission, is really how, the, how we approach and who are, in a way, the people that are uh, coming together there. And, and ultimately, our intention is really to, um, yeah, to understand this moment and understand uh, where architecture stands and where architecture can contribute more, but also for not only architects, but again, decision maker and, and citizen to understand, well, it will really change. Like, if you have a project like the one in Barcelona where the mayor has decided to build these houses for these elderly and the gentleman says they are living longer because they are living in these kind of apartments. It really affects life. So, um, yeah, so we, what we want is that people understand the power of architecture and somehow the impact it has on the life of everyone. This, there is this Italian architect, uh, Giancarlo De Carlo, always said architecture is too important to leave it to architect. And I think that's uh, also our idea. Thank you, Giovanna. Um, I would like to ask if uh, anyone has questions from the public. I see a hand. If there's any other hand on, in the air, I can just collect two questions, perhaps. Is there anyone else? Okay. Please. Yes. Hello. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Giovanna, Daniel, Paulo, and all the team. It's very, it was a pleasure to see the films all together, to have an, uh, 
a wide overview of the work you are doing with this. Uh, I'm curious, by the way, we are curious, we were discussing with my friend, uh, about the, the, the curatorial part of the project, because the CCA is a, well, you, you have the role of curator before being the, the director of the CCA. Uh, the curatorial part of selecting how did you, how was the process of choosing the architectural projects, the cities you were going to research these uh, these, these topics, how you relate the how you cross fields you know, between architects, uh, cities, and your curatorial approach, and also this is a second question, but some have, perhaps you can answer uh, the two uh, together. Uh, which were the difficulties, uh, for example, to go into so many different cultures, from uh, Japan to Baltimore, to Los Angeles, to Barcelona, uh, approaching the, not the architects, because of course they are easy to connect from the CCA and, and make them speak, but to connect and to make the uh, the homeless people, the people living alone in Japan, to make them talk, how was the, the process to, to reach them and to make them part of the film? Maybe I start and then you continue, Daniel. Um, thanks, Etel. So um, I think uh, curatorially has been a very interesting process because, um, and this is also why I, I would like also Daniel to uh, share his opinion. He might not think so, but anyhow, more of the <laughs> of the way we work it together is that um, somehow the um, you know when you curate uh, a show, somehow you are the kind of main director of of the show. Main uh, and and here the uh, the role has been really shared, I think, not only with Daniel, who, who um, has been the, the film director, but also with the team that we worked with. So it was a more shared um, curatorial work because somehow the medium has to, you know, I can think about something, but then the medium needed to be sure that this will actually be a good film, like that, that will actually be fine on, on camera somehow. So um, so we had to kind of go back and forth a lot about the ideas and the way we're produced because of the medium in itself and also because the medium as, I'm an architect, but I, you know, I, I never have done a movie. Well, now with, with Dania we have done this, but what I'm saying is like, it's not a medium that I know. So uh, it was a big stretch also for me personally. Um, so I think it's an interesting experimentation in terms of curatorial. It's like how you are sure that certain ideas are in, but also the, um, the, you're not in control of the medium at all. And then for your second part of the question, I think uh, those, these films are not scripted. And so a lot of things were happening and a lot of things were relying on the fact that uh, these people will will share something that we will understand that then put it together will will make a narrative but it was not possible to script it or make a narration it was was possible in the scouting to discover characters and so understand that um, a person will be sharing certain aspects or certain ideas but um, so it, a lot is um, um, I don't know how to say in English, in Italian, we'll say presa diretta, like is just to be there and this is what is happening. And I think there is not so much filter that, that we have done between the uh, camera and what you actually, the reality and what, what, you, what you see. And then I will say, and then I will let uh, Daniel answer to this, is that for me also as a, as a, as a, on a personal level, uh, you know, when you curate something, there is always, um, uh, you always work with the work of someone else. Like you show a drawing of an architect, a photography for someone else, and so on. So you are always at least two degrees of distance with the subject, because you're always showing the idea through the work of someone else. 
And here, the change for me was that we were there. We were in the street with these homeless people, you know, the, you, you felt their hair, you know, like, so this, and I hope that this path, and I think Jonas has been incredible as a filmmaker also of like, being so, uh, cinematographer also being so near the people. And, and this, I think, curatorially is also a big change because things are not mediated through an intellectual um, work that conceptualizes the work of someone else around a, a theme. I don't know if this makes sense. I agree. Um, yeah, and I would just... I mean, to say kind of a similar sentiment in a different way is that often documentary filmmaking, the, the author, the, the decision maker is not dance or fate, depending on what you believe in is, you know, we, we went to places, we knocked on doors and depending on who answered and agreed to, to participate in this project, that's who, who ended up in the movie. I mean, there were some moments, especially in, in the, the second film um, in Tokyo, where we had a little bit of luxury to, to do some extensive scouting. And I worked with some local researchers um, to find certain types of people who are living by themselves for different types of reasons, because we wanted to have kind of a diversity of, of motivations for, for living alone. Um, so that was a little, some of those characters were, were a little bit more targeted in that we went out searching for a type of person and found them, but, um, but also they're real people and we didn't know what they were gonna say sometimes when we, we press record. Um, and, and, and just in terms of the curatorial question, um, I think CCA had a pretty strong vision in, in one sense at the beginning of each movie. Giovanna really had some brilliant kernels of ideas, but it was just a, an iterative process of research, of discussion, of more research. Um, for this, this last movie, the Baltimore project was decided kind of last second. I mean, the, the pandemic really disrupted that, that film um, for about two years. And that gave us too much time to consider where we wanted to film. At one point, we were thinking about a, a project outside of Brussels. At another moment, I think Buenos Aires. So it started to feel like we were just going to go with places that started with the letter B. Um, which is a bad curatorial concept to work from, but um, but but then Care House kind of came onto the the horizon and, and made a lot of sense. And um, yeah, it's, I, I was also very impressed today when we we're talking about how casual sometimes a project can be. And one of the collaborators in our festival is in your film, the first film, in Vienna. So I think she might be in the room. I don't know. But it's very casual. I mean, I don't know how you think, feel about that. But she, like, yeah, she's in the film in the, one of the interviews. And it's very um, amazing how life happens, right? Um, uh, is there a question, uh, please? Well, uh, I want to congratulate both of you uh, for these three films, this trilogy. I think it tells us a lot about how we live today in cities. It's, they're mostly about loneliness, how we lose or we don't make up a family, or how we become uh, uh, solitaires in the, in the end of our lives. So I, I think they are mostly sociological approaches to the problem of housing. I miss some kind of political approach. So there's a, one politician only that, uh, in Barcelona who speaks. In Port and we know that housing today, it's a political, it's a very strong political issue. At least in Portugal, there have been manifestations and riots about uh, the right to housing. And I think maybe, if I can suggest the next film, I would say, uh, I don't know, a quadrology. I, I would try to go to cultures where people fight for housing, occupy housing, squat housing. Maybe it could be called why we squat housing. Uh, especially in Brazil, I, I've been following this uh, movement of ocupações, and uh, they are quite interesting to see how they, 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 they manage to get into buildings and they somehow do it with all, the whole family. So it's not about being alone and trying to find some company 
or sharing uh, uh, system, it's creating a, a community where family and the whole problem of, of, of property is daily discussed by, by the neighbors. So I, I, I don't know, I, maybe it was, it was your intention not to, to go on the political issue of housing, but I guess this is uh, the moment to do it uh, in a way. Thanks, Nuno, for the suggestion. Um, I would suggest to any house see a movie that Daniel did previously that is about this Caracas tower. At, I think you got a lion at the Venice Biennale, this, this Caracas uh, tower that was uh, the biggest squad. Um, so he might have addressed this a bit already. But uh, no, I agree with you. I think uh, it's a very good point, a very valid point. I think um, one, and it's, it's not a justification of like we didn't uh, went there, but I think one of the challenge was to go in these cities and um, also being there, but also that, that the examples are taken that can be applied to other places. So we were like from the local people, we will be always you know, come into a more kind of specific political issue, the kind of particular law they have there and so on. And, and then we felt like then this will, will become very difficult to, for us to kind of, um, not saying generalize, but, but let's say making up applicable to a kind of more global condition and so on. So um, maybe it was that, I don't know, maybe Daniel his other. No. I I think um, that's that's the kernel of, of the decision is is wanting to make films that were both about very specific places, specific cultures, specific political contexts, and yet could also be legible and inspirational in many places at the same time. And that there's tension there is how how specific do you go in the storytelling um, to find that balance. But um, if you're offering to help produce a fourth film, I'm in, yeah. yeah great, is there any question? I think we have time for one more question. Um, okay, there is one. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I haven't seen the first two movies. I kind of appeared here unexpectedly. I was just passing by and saw that something was happening. Uh, but uh, it's very interesting to see, and it was kind of relevant because back in my home country, I was looking into the situation quite a lot uh, with the elderly people living and kind of not changing the interiors and the way they live over the years. Like, if, if being compared with the people, uh, the younger generation living now and constantly updating their living lives, buying things from Amazon or whatever. And in Lithuania, uh, for the older generation, uh, ever since being occupied from Russia for like 30 years ago, there is many elderly, uh, older people that have not changed their interiors since then, have not, uh, changed places, they kept living in the same place and, well, basically living the same life. How much do you believe uh, it affects the mental health, physical health and overall happiness living in the same environment without, like, change and just living in the same memory or basically just, uh, yeah, not, not, not having this change in your just daily view, basically. I think there is a, a, you know, in doing the research, and we really have to thank Anna, who, you know, read so many things about aging for all of us, but um, one of the mm, solutions that everybody wants to apply is, is called aging in place. So the idea is that actually you stay where you are, and that is extremely reassuring. Like, the question of change comes in because of what, as we've seen in the movie, our 
economical decision. It's like you cannot afford anymore where you are or, you know, you get kicked off, kicked out or things like this. But I don't think that um, living always in the same place affect you negatively, a person I think. Like, I don't know. I, I don't think. I think, in fact, one of the principles of the Barcelona projects are that the elderly people, so the, who gets the apartments are elderly people that are already living in the neighborhood. And so, yes, it's not their apartment, but they, they know the neighborhood, they know the people, they go to the same bar, they, there are social ties, uh, they go to the market, there are, that's the neighborhood they have lived in the last, I don't know, decades, and therefore they have, um, yeah, connection there and, and, and so on. So I think, I don't know, I think I respect what the, the manager of the building says is, is also about stability. And, and so, yeah, I'm not sure that the change. At the same time, the, the first woman, you know, this kind of hilarious character with all these kind of flowers everywhere, she, she thinks the opposite. She thinks that to, you know, you need to fight monotony and, and, and so on. So I, I also think it's a personal choice. From, from, from which country you come? Okay, thanks. But I don't know, Daniel. Yeah. Um... I would just say a few years ago, my family helped my elderly grandmother redecorate her apartment and she was very unhappy with it. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't make a big generalization about whether it's good or bad. I think it's about whether people have the agency to live the way that they want to. And um, if they need help with that, then that hopefully there's support systems in place to help them. But yeah, a good question though. Well, great. Um, maybe we can wrap up. Um, Giovanna started the soft opening with a Portuguese introduction. Maybe you can finish here in Portuguese. Será que podias também falar um bocadinho sobre o que como é que achas que o programa do CCA e o Arquiteturas Film Festival, a vossa participação pode pode também contribuir para como é que vês que que o vosso programa possa contribuir para o que está a acontecer também na cidade e que certamente mudou muito nos, desde que viveste no Porto nos anos 90. Sim. Uh, então, um, muito obrigado. Eu vou tentar. Eu, não, não é simples a, a, a pergunta. Um, so, eu vivi aqui no Porto no anos 92 e 93, foi aqui por fazer Erasmus na FAUP, então eh, aprendi a falar português eh, há 30 anos, eu não, não falo muito, não. então, essa é, é, é a que eu me lembro. Um, não, nós estamos muito contentes da participação do CCA, do CCA no, no, no esto Uh, festival e uh, por a possibilidade de most, uh, mostrar esta trilogia e também uh, amanhã uh, mostrar uh, filmes que são no nosso arquivo. Então, uma outra parte do, 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 do CCA que uh, coleciona tá? também filmes. E depois há uma instalação, um instituto, uh, com outros filmes que temos produzido nos últimos anos, publicações, conversações, e so, isso. Um, não, acho que o, o, o primeiro ponto é, é o tema do festival que tu estabeleceste, estabele, estabeleceste, uh, Paulo, e... Um, é, essa questão do onde a vida uh, acontece e acho que para nós a possibilidade de contribuir a isso é, é fundamental porque de uma maneira ou outra as questões que o CCA se pôs todo o tempo é como a um, arquitetura, arquitetura e urbanismo desenho do de paisagem pode acompanhar a vida de uma maneira uh, Luz, eh, mais estruturante, mais suportante, 
Está existe en portugués, por tanto, no sé, estoy inventando. É, é isso. Então, acho que fomos muito contentos dessa invitação por apoiar esta ideia do onde a vida acontece. Boa. Obrigado, Giovanni, e obrigado a todos. Até